For him, as a computer designer and software guy, the world in his mind, this alternate universe that he could shape, was the computer. And so he has this power to capture and contain another world and to shape it. And so for him, designing the Apple I and Apple II was a chance to create a little parallel universe that he could shape. When the Homebrew Club started in March of 1975, and it was, it was the perfect storm because you had the Altair computer that had been shown on the cover of the magazine. You had a whole bunch of nerds from aerospace companies and Hewlett Packard that wanted computers in their home. And then you had high school kids who were fascinated by electronics, who had gotten into Pong and the first video game consoles. And all of that was kind of stewing. And I went there and they were really into something completely different that would have scared me off microprocessors. I went home that night and I studied the data sheet for a microprocessor and I came to the realization it was just like all those computers I built in high school seven years earlier. It was just like those and it was on one chip now and now I would finally have my own computer. That became the love of my life that night. The very, Later on that night after I was scared I, I realized now I'm gonna finally be able to build my own computer. During this time when the homebrew club was evolving and Wozniak was on the brink of creating a revolutionary personal computer, America was ready for a change. And in the 70s, you kind of had a flat economy, you had disco, you had all these, these terrible things, and a lot of people were trying to invent new things in their garages. And that's how the economy usually rejuvenates, is you have a rotten economy, people go in the garage and they invent the future. The pair found an investor and began producing a limited run of the Apple I. The Apple I was first assembled in the spring of 1976. So they were literally in Steve Jobs' bedroom, they were working on it, and then they were working on it in the living room, and then they got kicked out by the parents into the garage. The genius of the Apple I was in the efficiency of Wozniak's design. It was smaller and more affordable than other computers on the market. It could do more with fewer chips. Although the Apple I was not a bestseller in the mainstream market, it was an excellent opportunity for Jobs and Wozniak to perfect the marketing and engineering for their next great machine. When Apple II debuted at the West Coast Computer Fair in 1977, it took the technological world by storm. The great moment happened for the industry when the Apple II was shown at the West Coast Computer Fair in the spring of 77. Because what happened was you had this convergence of the brilliance of Steve Wozniak making a color computer that he wanted, that he knew that he would love. At the same time as the brilliance of Steve Jobs packaging that computer with consumer grade plastic case that looked like a real piece of home appliance that you would have in your home. Beautiful packaging and marketing all presented in this booth right up front in the West Coast Computer Fair and they were mobbed. There was this mob scene, and I think at that moment at the fair, everybody realized that something has shifted. We've gone beyond the metal boxes of the hobbyist computer into this thing that's actually gonna go into people's lives, regular people, not just, not just nerds from the homebrew club. What an unbelievable thing to turn on a computer, beep, and it's got the program already running. Waz got fascinated with having a computer that would show color on the screen, you know, color characters, and to be able to do games, and th things that he would wanna do. And so the Apple I was kind of his first attempt, but the Apple II was his dream machine. Wozniak had amazed people once again with his revolutionary and minimalist design for the Apple II. If you look at the, the card here on my right, this is a board for a North Star computer to control a single floppy drive. Look at all the chips on this. And this is the board that Wozniak designed in the Christmas of 1977. This was actually more reliable, more flexible, and more profitable because you could add a floppy drive to your computer, two floppy drives, and spend only this amount of money to, to do it. This kind of design made Apple successful. Steve Wozniak's spirit can still be seen today in some of Apple's most innovative creations. There's a little sort of ghost in the machine of, of Steve Wozniak that is in Apple today. And I, I like to think of it as being the iPod and the iPhone because those machines, again, they're minimal number of chips, but they do a lot and they're really powerful and they're, they're easy to use. 
that's, I think, the legacy of Steve Wozniak is, that still lives in Apple today.